Hi, I'm Dr. Amber Bowler, Cardiology Fellow at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, here at ACC 2018 for Fits on the Go video blog. I have the distinct pleasure of talking with Dr. Alan Jaffe. He's a professor of cardiology at Mayo Clinic and professor of laboratory medicine and pathology at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Thank you for joining us today, Dr. Jaffe. It's my pleasure. So there's been a hot topic here at ACC this year uh, surrounding high sensitivity troponin and you've really been staple in uh, production of this biomarker. Can you give us a little bit of information about high sensitivity troponin and, and what you've been discussing here at ACC 2018? Well, high sensitivity troponin has been available throughout the rest of the world since 2010. So there's eight years of experience and, and we can use that experience in making sure that things go smoothly here. In point of fact, if we educate properly, this should end up allowing us to discharge patients from the emergency room who don't have an acute coronary syndrome much more rapidly and be more secure in admitting those people who do have an acute coronary syndrome. But there's going to take need to be some education because there are going to be far more modest elevations in patients who have a variety of other diseases, both cardiovascular disease and non-cardiovascular disease because they represent one of two things, either structural heart disease that is underlying or a stress response, supply demand imbalance. And in that circumstance, if all those people are considered MIs, quote unquote, then you're going to swamp the system and those patients aren't going to get care for their primary illnesses, which may be heart failure or arrhythmias or maybe a non-cardiac diagnosis. So we need to be careful to make sure that we don't conflate an elevated troponin with acute ischemic heart disease. It's never been the case that it was, but unfortunately with the less sensitive assays, the, high, the higher troponins are associated with ischemic heart disease. So there were more of the elevations that really were associated with ischemic heart disease. And we now need to change that paradigm. And there are a variety of protocols that have been suggested. I've suggested one that we're going to implement at Mayo that I wrote up for the American Journal of Medicine in December of 2017 about how to think about this because there's some pitfalls in them. And one of the pitfalls is trying to do things with what I call tight windows, small changes. And small changes are beyond the ability of some of the assays to detect and in addition, we all have physiologic responses so that we all can have some modest changes. And that can become a problem if one doesn't have one's thinking hat on. And I know you've really dedicated your career to work in this field, cardiac biomarkers. Uh, I know you've, you've gone around and educated many of the cardiologists, especially at Mayo Clinic, but have you done a lot of work educating emergency room physicians and physicians from other specialties on how to interpret these results? Well, we've tried. I, I really think that in that area, we haven't done as much as we ought. Uh, despite the attempts of many of us, uh, unfortunately, we've not come together as a community. And one of the important initiatives that many of us believe should happen is that we need to take lab, ED, cardiology, and put them together. And we're trying to do that at Mayo to generate these protocols that we all agree on so that we all help each other understand and we all generate what is best for patients overall and not for one area versus the other, as has been the case, I think, in the past. And I think part of that responsibility is, falls on, on us as cardiologists. We really didn't embrace troponin as aggressively as we could have. And if we had, we would be the people who be, would, would have trained the emergency department. Instead, the emergency department went off on its own because we didn't do that sort of training. We now have an opportunity to do that again, and I hope we do it. Do you have any advice for fellows choosing a mentor in research and academic medicine? Well, and in terms of finding a mentor, I think that the reality is that there are lots of people who are doing lots of research. And I think sometimes fellows feel that the opportunity to write papers is the most important thing, and it's really not. The most important thing is finding out how to do research, and that means a mentor who says, you have to write the protocol, you have to put it through the IRB, you have to do all of the difficult steps. And in point of fact, from the mentoring point of view, that takes more time. 
But from the point of view of the fellow, the fellow then leaves not just with manuscripts, but with an ability to do the research and at least decide whether or not that's what he or she wants to do going long term. I think so often fellows leave with lots of publications, but without a feel of how really to do the research that they're interested in. Now, you wear many hats at Mayo Clinic. You're in the cardiac ICU, you're in outpatient clinics, you're in the lab. What has been the most gratifying piece of your career? I think it's working with young people. I think if I had to, to do it all over again and you said I couldn't be a cardiologist, I'd say I'd be a coach. Uh, I played a lot of athletics in my youth. I loved coaching and I loved dealing with young people because, and in particularly bright young people, such as a lot of the fellows at Mayo, because they challenge you. And they ask questions that you need to rethink. And sometimes the stuff we're doing isn't right. And the fellows challenge you to think that way. And I'd like to think that I help them think through some of the problems as well. So I guess that's probably the most gratifying thing I've done, is to help young people grow. Well, we appreciate all of your guidance and your mentorship. It's been a fantastic experience at Mayo Clinic. For more videos like this, please head to youtube.com slash fits on the go.